Hello and welcome to webinar number four, the construction phase on your new home project. This is the third piece of the puzzle for energy compliance. This webinar is designed to assist the homeowner builder prepare for energy compliance during construction. This webinar is brought to you as a courtesy of Pacific Modern Homes and Red Tape Express. At this stage of the project, the plans and calculations should be submitted to the building department. Now's the time to get a good understanding of what will be required during construction and how to prepare to document the requirements for the building department. Energy compliance will require the homeowner builder or the subcontractor that you hire to complete installation certificates that must be submitted to the building department at the end of construction in order to get your occupancy permit. The installation certificates are maintained on the CalCERT's website, so now would be a good time to open up your browser and log in to www.calcerts.com. Their screen will open up and you will see the three buttons in the upper right hand corner we have discussed before. Click on the login button. Now using the username and password you received in the email, you will type them in to log on to the website. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will be using jhome1 and typing in their password. Okay, this should take us to the website. You will see this type of website. There may not be all of this information in the center of the screen, but what you're looking for are the list of projects, and your project should be down here. Uh, it will have the name of the project and its address. We're working with Homeowner Builder Example 2. It's in Elk Grove, so we'll just click on that button. When we do that, we'll come back to a screen that we saw during the last webinar. This is the overview of the project information for a single family home. Uh, there's still some blank elements in here, but we'll get to those a little later on. What we want to do is go to the roadmap. We want to click on it and we want to go to the CF1R. The CF1R is the area where the energy calculations were maintained. However, for the purpose of today's webinar, it also keeps a copy of all the tests that are required. And all the tests uh, refer to all of the installation certificates and the verification certificates that you need to provide to the building department at the end of construction. On the left is a list of all the possible certificates that could be issued on the project along with a short description of each one of the certificates. Most projects only have a small portion of these certificates required, and they are listed in the two columns on the right. There are installation certificates that are completed by the homeowner or their subcontractor. If it is required, it will have a yes in it. So we look at this first one, and there it is. Space conditioning systems, ducts and fans. That needs to be completed. The second one down that says yes. Fenestration installation. Fancy word for windows. Third one down, envelope air sealing. How are you going to seal up the house? That one's required to be completed. Next one down is insulation installation. That's required. On this project, roof radiant barrier is required. So there's, there'll need to be a radiant barrier on the roof and in the attic space. And we'll go through all those requirements in future webinar. Keep on scrolling down the list and you will see one here that says duct leakage. Any new construction that has a heating and air conditioning system with ductwork will require that the ductwork be inspected and certified. It also requires that it have a certificate of verification. These are referred to as CF3Rs. The CF3R must be provided by a HERS rater. So it's important to understand when you have a certificate of verification, a HERS rater needs to be hired. The sooner you hire the HERS rater and have them involved in the project, the easier it will be for you. In this project, we can take a look. There's a yes here for the installation certificate, but there's also a yes for the certificate of verification. That also happens on airflow, on fan efficiency, and on the return duct design. All those have to have installation certificates and they have to have a certificate of verification. Most of these occur towards the end of construction, but bear in mind that if you have any ductwork that requires a HERS certification, you need to have the HERS rater out there to inspect the ductwork before the ceiling and the walls and the floor are closed up. We'll scroll down this list a little bit. You'll see that there is a requirement for SDHWS distribution. It stands for Single Dwelling Hot Water Service Supply. Okay, so it's your hot water system. That requires an installation certificate, but not a certificate of verification by a HERS rater. 
The last item on the list is lighting. That only requires an installation certificate as well. So in the future, we'll go through each one of these forms, show you how to complete them. But the important thing to understand while you're planning for construction is you do have HERS measures. You need to get a HERS rater. In the future, we will be providing more detailed information on one item up here called QII. QII stands for Quality Insulation Installation. It is a very big credit. It helps your house become much tighter and much more weather resistant. However, if you have a project that gets involved with QII, you need to have the HERS Rater hired at the very beginning of the project because the HERS Rater will have to be on the site multiple times to make sure that all of the walls, all of the membranes, everything is sealed. That means that when you get ready to put in your uh, wood floor framing, the HERS Rater needs to be on site. If you're doing a slab on grade before you tilt up that first wall, the HERS Rater has to be there to make sure that the sill plate on that wall is properly sealed so that they can document it. If you miss any one of the HERS inspections, you lose that complete credit. And that can be a significant credit that may be impossible to make up by other improvements in the rest of the house. Okay, now if you want to take a look at what the installation certificate or a CF2R looks like, we could go up right now and click on the project roadmap and click on CF2R. But you're going to get a little error message. It says this lot is not ready for supplemental CF1R and CF2R testing. Please be sure that the project main information is complete. CF1R signed off and paid for as well as lot information completed. Okay, it's just a little warning. You can't get to the CF2R page uh, to look at those forms until everything on the CF1R is completed. And sure enough, when we look at this, uh, we're going to notice that the builder contact name is missing. Well, it's going to be homeowner builder. So let's just, for this project, we'll just put in J homeowner their phone number because they want to have a builder's phone number it's going to be 916-684-1111 that's our home phone number now that we've completed that information there's still a couple more blank elements the building permit number is missing so uh, the building department will give you a permit number. Let's say that we have it on this one. It is a residential project for 2016, and it's project number 021. So it's the 21st project in that jurisdiction. Uh, we do not need to identify the utility or the electrical utility or, or gas utility because we're not going for any type of special incentives on this project. If you're going for incentives from the utility company, you need to provide that. But now we come down to a project superintendent. This form is designed to take care of anything from a small single family home to a large apartment complex. So you could have a builder and a supervisor. In this case, you don't. The builder and the supervisor is the same person. It's J Homeowner. And phone number hasn't changed. Phone number is still 916-684-1111. Now, after we've done all of this, you do not want to try and go up and click on the roadmap because it won't save the information. Make sure you click the Save button. Okay, now that it's saved, let's go back up to the project roadmap and let's click on the CF2R button. It should allow us to jump to the CF2R page and sure enough, it does. This gives you a general overview of all the certificates that need to be completed. At the top of the page, you will see some additional supplemental CF1R forms. These do not need to be completed on your project. They are information that is used on much larger apartment projects but they or on subdivisions, but they do not apply to a single family home. However, if you drop down to the middle of the page, you will see the whole list of tests that need to be completed. It is only going to list the forms that you need to complete for your project, so it's a much smaller list. And you would go in and start completing each one of these for each separate section. If you have a subcontractor that is taking care of the windows, they could complete that form. That's why it's important for them to have access to the site. Without that access, they'll never be able to get here to complete the form. However, in most cases, you may be doing the air sealing. You may be doing the insulation installation. You may be doing the roof radiant barrier installation. All of those are items that you could fill out. So this just gives you a quick overview of the forms that you need to test, what you need to be prepared for, when you need to hire a HERS rater. We can back up and go to the public home page, which is over there in the upper left corner. 
If you need to find a HERS Raider, CalCERTS has provided a directory. You can locate it here under the button Find a Raider. When you click on this button, you will see that everything's blank right now. There are 574 Raiders approved through CalCERTS right now. You can go over here in the list of Raider certification and you can pick the type of Raider that you want. Your project as a single family home will be new construction residential. So you're going to click on that. This will give you a list of all of the HERS Raiders throughout the state of California that have been certified to do new home construction. So you'll see each one of them has different levels of certifi certificates that they have. Some uh, have Energy Stars, some of them have Special Mortgage, some of them have Solar, some of them have Alterations. You're interested in the one that has new construction. Let's say that that's 369 out of 574. That's probably not what I want. I'm in Alpine County. So I'm going to click on Alpine County. Okay, that took it down to 42. Okay, if you want to see all of them, because right now it defaults to 12 per page, you can click down here to 96. And that will show you all of the HERS Raiders that say that they do work in that area. So take a look. You can inspect this list. You will find phone numbers uh, generally for almost every one of these individuals. This is part of their marketing. And you can give them a call and talk to them and set up arrangements to secure a HERS Raider on your project. That concludes the presentation for today. If you have any questions about this overview, please give me a call. Again, my name is Dave Morgan. My company is Red Tape Express. Call our office or send us an email if you have any questions at all.